but bring it down. Break the walls down. Who cares? Burn it. Unless they fix it, and then I'm all for it. What's up, Wikimaniacs? Welcome to Reddit on Wiki, where we scour Reddit in search of some of the wildest stories the internet has to offer. Except for this week when Reddit is down. Shout out the Reddit blackout. Reddit, Reddit, Reddit blackout. My bad. <laughs> Too many colors. It's going to be so far away from by the time this. Well, hopefully uh, Reddit will have fixed it by then. But I was going to say most have gone dark indefinitely. So. Oh, really? Uh, or quite a few anyway have gone dark indefinitely. I can only imagine more and more will pile on, but we'll see. Anyway, my name is Josh Shell. Back at again are my co-hosts, which I should introduce before we get into topics. Uh, Sean Salvino and John Consignato. What's up, boys? How goes it, friends? I'm dead inside. Well, that's good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Starting off strong. Are you, are you dead inside because Reddit is dead? Sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What a dark start. How much How much do you use Reddit on a, on a daily basis, John? Probably none, unless it's oh, my okay. time to record. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sean? I'm on it quite a bit, actually, to be honest. I don't know all the ones to get stories. That's why I'm constantly asking Wikimaniacs. But I'm, I'm usually, that's where I get all my sports news. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, NFL, NBA, my own personal sports team subreddits, professional wrestling sports subreddits. So I nice. don't know shit about shit now, <laughs> which, you know what? More power to all those subreddits. Uh, I do wish that they had been like, all right, this is the website we're going to in the meantime, because <laughs> I feel like a goddamn drug addict. I'm like, I don't know what's happening anywhere. Yeah, we need a, a Reddit alternative. Uh, yeah. There needs to and be that's some- our next move, Wikimania. <laughs> we're ending the we podcast our, to we focus podcast 100% <laughs> on making the new Reddit. We'll have to completely change our podcast name if we do that. Yes, <laughs> we do. That's fine. We're so We're famous now. It doesn't matter. Roboys. Just change we it to yeah. Roboys. Really tied our ship to this Reddit thing. And if it goes yeah. down, we're we kind of fucked. We're going to sink. <laughs> but bring it down. Break the walls down. Who cares? Burn it. Unless they fix it. And then I'm all for it. But Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with uh, the, the, is it a, would you call it a strike? I guess a black like protest. Protest. Yeah. yeah. As, as so much as anyone, an online protest as you can get, I guess. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, I guess this will be the news portion of the section before we get into the show. Uh, skip ahead if you want. Uh, but uh, yeah, so Reddit is charging uh, third-party developers out the ass to create and maintain their third-party apps. So much so that none of the apps can work anymore. Uh, which it's, it's, is, it's not only that it's so much money, it's that they were told like 30 days before their first payment is supposed to start. Out. Right. Yeah. 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 Which is so, ridiculous. It's like <laughs> you are paying nothing. And then in 30 days, you're going to have to pay us $20 million. Yeah. What? It'd be like if your landlord came up to you like two weeks before rent and was like, oh yeah, I'm doubling your rent, which I think in their case, they were like, like 20 million times yeah, their rent. Say, way more. Uh, and so uh, a lot of the, a lot of the moderating tools run off third party apps and, and accessibility. Uh, it makes it accessibility like, to people. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah. On, it's, it's, uh, get your shit yeah. together. They have like apps yeah. that like read out the posts for like people that, you know, can't read uh, on the Reddit due to, you know, whatever disabilities, but yeah, yeah. There's just a lot of things that the Reddit app is, so bad at and you wouldn't know unless you downloaded these other apps <laughs> yeah and then you're like holy shit why i the one thing i don't understand is why reddit isn't just buying all these people and like improving True. their own app i don't Working know why them. that's not happening it's crazy that that's not happening and then they went with com- this instead because Companies. capitalism <laughs> yeah <of> capitalism <laughs> they're making like n- probably 60 percent of reddit users have no idea that third-party apps even exist so like True. i'm one of those people yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I uh, primarily only use Reddit through a third party app, so I'm like, this shit is gonna fucking blow. Yeah, I've so we've worked with Reddit in the past, and I've 
I've used both like for one for myself and then one like, cause we, we did work with, they paid us for a bit. And so I was like, well, I'll use the app and see how it is. And uh, yeah, Terrible. it is missing a lot of features that the other ones are. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a struggle. Uh, it's so, so bare bones. It's ridiculous. I'm like, yeah. are, y'all, y'all just like bragged about the profits that y'all have been making. So why <laughs> is this so bad still? Oh, yeah. So anyway, uh, the the blackout is uh, is happening today. Luckily, I've I've got my stories, so I was not affected by it. And uh, yeah, we'll hop into some of the stories today. On today's episode, we have a pregnant woman forced to sit on the ground, Ooh. a listener who skips a wedding to go fishing, oh, a, <laughs> a husband who isn't invited to a family wedding, uh, Probably a boyfriend. Shitty. Who wants his girlfriend to make a good first impression? Sean. Oh, we're back. Uh, and an OP steals breast milk from their nephew. Oh, Dang. wait, there's there's one more. Sorry. And an OP kicks out their brother's pregnant girlfriend. Ooh, a, lot a lot of pregnancy of and baby people. stories. Yeah, there are. He actually. just really he just really want to press that fuck them kids button, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so many options to do it today. Yeah. <laughs> I also have another uh, a button that I hope to get to use today. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, new button. We're slowly building out the the catalog the here. The sound deck over here. The sound deck, yeah. Uh, we need a producer so that we can have someone live do it while we do the podcast. Oh, I know, right? Uh, for the Patreon exclusive stories, we have a daughter forced to learn sign language and OP posts a video of their niece and nephew online. So... If you want to hear those two stories and get ad free episodes, head on over to patreon.com slash cultivate podcast network. Sign up today. Uh, boys, I, we hit most of the news topics today, but is there anything else you guys want to hit on before we hop into the stories? Let's talk about pregnant people this episode. I guess. <laughs> Let's get into the milk. Let's dive in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the milk. No, that was the milk was way later. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll hop into the uh, we'll ease our way in. We'll ease our way into the milk story. I think that's the last one even. Um, so first one, cross posted by Fluff and Stuff 42. Uh, I believe when I looked at this, it was like 2 million impressions on our, our subreddit, which is crazy. My uh, God. But the title for it is, Am I the asshole for telling a pregnant woman to sit on the ground instead of giving her my seat? Yes. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yes. What the fuck? Absolutely. I can't wait is, to be wrong on this, but yes. What the fuck? I have a feeling that this is a trick one because Sean kind of alluded to it already, but there's no way in hell for me to justify and not call this person an asshole for making a pregnant woman sit on the ground. So, yeah. The title is so egregious that I feel like <laughs> you would have changed it if there wasn't yeah. a twist. You know what I mean? But also, yeah. is the streak still alive? Are we doing that still? Uh, well, you guys fought hard against the competition part. Uh, I don't know where oh. you guys stand on that after the sitting on it for a week. But, oh, uh, if we're making it a Patreon exclusive thing, then I'm down. Then we're okay, okay. with it. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are united on that. Um, yeah. As long as yeah. money's involved, Sean and I agree. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to pit us against each other, guys, with your racist act? Uh, we better be getting paid for it. <laughs> uh i i yeah anyway <laughs> i'm glad we're on the same what page. do you have to say about it john <laughs> <laughs> nothing i'm just trying to move on yeah, from that's it. Uh, right that's the fucking streak, right. can't the say streak shit. does continue uh yeah. we'll see up until the story if it if it continues um so my nephews both graduated from high school this morning and i wanted to sit up front so i camped out a bit in front of the entrance i brought my folding camping chair and my headphones to listen to my show about 40 minutes before the school would let us inside, a pregnant woman got next to me since somebody's let her in line, I assume her partner, and she asked me within five minutes if she could have my chair as she was going to have trouble standing the whole time. I said, no, sorry, I need it. I have bad knees. I went to my things. She asked me again within two minutes and the answer was the same. She, however, got a little mad at me and said that she was going to be struggling the whole time and asked her partner to tell me. He asked me himself, politely, and I again responded, sorry, but I need it more and suggested she could wait in the car or just sit on the ground. At this point, the husband directly called me an asshole, but left me alone. So am I the asshole? 
Yeah, I'm going to need to see, like, the medical history on the knees. Like, how bad are the <laughs> knees? You know what I'm saying? Well, <laughs> I think the biggest mm. thing is that it's his own chair, right? Or their own chair. Yeah. I was going to say, I think the streak <laughs> is dead for me because I'm not calling this person an asshole at all. I'm wow. sorry. It, it's it, Look, even if whatever the hit medical history is, the fact is they came prepared for an event. Right, they knew they had busted knees. They knew they had like foot problems. As someone who has chronic foot and like knee injuries, I need to sit majority of the time because it fucking hurts just yeah. to stand for prolonged periods of time. So when I go to events like that, I'm gonna come prepared. So I get it. It sucks telling a pregnant woman no, but at the same time, they know they're gonna be in a graduation. Why are they not prepared for it? Why if why can't the husband go back to their car? run to the house and then grab a chair for the wife. Yeah. Cause it's been about 40 minutes. <laughs> it's been about 40 minutes. So uh, to me, uh, to me, I'm sorry. Like, yes. Like uh, if, if this person was probably capable of standing for a little more at, at OP, um, it would be nice to offer a chair. However, I think they're completely in the clear because they knew the issues that they had and they came prepared for it. The other person can't just expect them to accommodate them for just for that. Yeah. Sean still seems not sure. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I don't have bad knees, so I mean, I don't know. I just know me. <laughs> What's that like? Yeah, I, <laughs> I know. What's that like? <laughs> I just know that there's there's no way I could say no in that situation, unless my knees were like absolutely fucked. Like John, can you sit on the ground, or you would be fucked up? You know how hard it would be for me to like try to get up from the ground, like. It'll take like three people for me to like, <laughs> hey, will get me up. Like my shit, my whole left body is completely destroyed. Jesus. So, okay, well, like we yeah, don't I know mean, the severity of that person's, but you know they disclose that to that the the other party. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, y'all are making a lot of sense, but me, I'm just like, yeah. I, well, yeah, I, listen, I, I get where you're coming from. Where it's like, in that situation, would I do the same thing? Maybe not. I might be like, hey, yeah, sure. Have the seat. But I'm also like, I don't know. I, I'm an able body young man. I could stand for a bit. Um, yeah. My thing is, I, I can't call this person an asshole without feeling ableist myself. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, mm, I don't want to tell this person to stand when they might not be able to. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. they came prepared. Why didn't the husband or the or the, you know would think of a chair or something or let his wife sit in the car for a bit windows down yeah. ac on and op did give solutions like there's there's so many other solutions where i'm like i don't think op is the asshole in this situation <laughs> yeah uh so that's that's kind of where i'm at that's fair I, I i mean i i understand where y'all are coming from i just can only think of me but maybe yeah you guys are probably right uh you gave solutions you sat in your chair you explained your disability and uh yeah i yeah i'm just in my own head about it i'm like i can't imagine saying that to a pregnant lady and also uh my knees are okay so yeah damn i'm starting oh and one the streak is dead, <laughs> we guys. broke the streak i think we're Fuck we're all me. we're all oh and one at least we're at least you're still ahead on the on the tallies uh, true the monthly but tally. I, can't, I, I can't call myself perfect anymore and it, it pains two me episodes inside. of perfection is pretty fucking crazy <laughs> that is crazy <laughs> It's pretty fucking crazy. Two straight <laughs> back to back. That's fucking crazy. But yeah, starting off on an L. And that's okay, John. That's okay. That's fine. You broke it and now we can relax and just have fun. That's true. I am more. It's yeah. not, I'm, I'm not in my the head. The weight is right? off, brother. It's gone. it's gone. I also did pick a lot of hard titles this episode just to God trip up. You. So. <laughs> you don't want to see you win, brother. <laughs> Classic white man, you know what I'm saying? Keep it exactly. <laughs> Trying to keep us down all the time. So the, the second story we got here is posted by Advanced Lower Score Ad 3949. Uh, and the title is, Am I the asshole for not going to my uncle's wedding and going fishing instead? And this one's a personal one, right? This is a listener submitted, yeah. Whoa. Oh, well. I'm I can going imagine the, the uncle is a douche. <laughs> Same. <laughs> so I'm going to you say you're, you're probably in the clear. Um, okay. But then again, you you already admitted to having fucked up titles this time. So, fuck it. You you are the asshole. I'm playing 3D chess. <laughs> yeah. I'm going and against you're all the playing checkers. <laughs> have we had a listener asshole yet? We've had Not one, yet. right? No. Uh, I think it wasn't framed as a, am I the asshole though. 
I, th- I think we had one where everybody was an asshole or something like that, or nobody was the Everyone asshole. Everyone could so have been. Something like that. I don't Not know. A, could I, have I think there was one on, like, I think it was John's episode where he had one that wasn't a Am I the Asshole, but we were like, oh, if, if this was an Am I the Asshole, you yeah, might be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. That, I think that's the one you're thinking of. Uh, I'm probably wrong here, but um, fuck it. Well, I don't want to start 0-2, so I'm going to go the opposite, and I'm going with the odds. (laughs) Listeners, not the asshole. Uncle probably sucks, or they just don't have any relationship with them, so why would they show up to the wedding? Fair enough. All right, so some backstory. I, 30 female, got married six years ago. Oh, no. I was then 24, (laughs) marrying my high school sweetheart, male 29, who was then 23. I invited my whole family. My uncle and his two kids were among the invited. His daughter, then 16, was one of my bridesmaids. The day of my wedding, six years ago, he dropped my cousin off to the church with us girls to get ready at 8 a.m. Pictures were at noon, and the wedding was at 2.30. My uncle handed me a coffee, which was my favorite, and told me that he uh, he would not be back in time for pictures or the wedding or the reception because he was going fishing and taking my almost 16-year-old male yeah, cousin with I him. Yeah, I lost. I lost. <laughs> ah, back on the winning board, baby. Let's go. <laughs> oh, I chose difficult titles. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking uh, about it too much now, bro. <laughs> well, it, if that wasn't a listener one, you might say asshole. It, so it is technically a difficult title. You know what I mean? It's just not difficult because we know it's a listener. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um. So he said he wasn't going to be able to make it back because he was going fishing and he won't be able to start the breathalyzer when he's too drunk to start the car. Jeez. Oh my God. What a terrible brother. uncle. So DUI for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, this was six years ago. Mind you, even the uncle I hated and didn't want to be there managed to shower, get dressed nice, go three days without using drugs to be sober and not smell of meth and managed to go to uh, most managed to post a bail a week before my wedding to be there. But one of my two favorite uncles wasn't coming to go fishing. I imagine meth is pretty hard to not use if you love meth. So that (laughs) uncle was a fucking goat, dude. (laughs) I've never done, I've never done meth, but from what I've seen on TV, meth heads are, they look pretty rough, man. So he went three days without it for you. Yeah. I give a lot of kudos. (laughs) Uh, That's a good uncle. Uh, For real. So, few months back, I received an RSVP to my uncle's wedding. So this is uh, modern time, today mm. time. He's marrying a friend of my mom's. I'm glad he's happy, but I haven't talked to him in six years since he didn't come to my wedding. Shit. Well, I mailed back the RSVP with going fishing in all That's caps. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's fucking I sick. It. I hate fishing, but I'll at least kayak most of the time. So they are actually committing to going. Yeah, committing to the bit. You can just <laughs> you stay home. You don't actually have to go. You could just. You say don't have going. to go fishing. <laughs> you already sent the the RSVP card. Yeah, <laughs> good. <laughs> it's not legally binding. Uh, so my soon to be uh, my uncle and soon to be bride contacted my parents to try and talk me into changing my mind. To which I told them we hadn't talked in six years that I would be going fishing. And that maybe if he wanted me there, he should have thought about my wedding. Six, or he should have thought about going to my wedding six years ago. Yep. Facts. His answer was he brought me a coffee and my 16 year old cousin who was a bridesmaid. So I sent him the reservation that I will be kayaking and fishing during his wedding. Am I the asshole? I would have door dashed him a coffee, uh, but no, you're not. The, you're not the asshole. Uh, yeah, uh, I was completely wrong, even though I, you know, I went against my gut feeling just to try and be right. Just to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you're, you're totally fine. You're in the right. Um. And plus, like family or no family, like I kind of had like a hard set rule when I got married. If if I hadn't seen or talked to you in two years, you're not invited. Uh, yeah, because because why? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. He hasn't talked to you and reached out and apologized. And six years later, if you're still feeling the type of way about it, totally fine. I mean, it's you're you're in charge of how you feel, and yep. uh, I I love a petty revenge. So. <laughs> Kudos to you. But that again, you don't event. have it to. Is. You don't have to fish or kayak unless you really want to kayak. But I'm just saying, like you know, yeah, kayaking's fun. Yeah. What are you saying, John? Well, I will give you my official judgment. Not the asshole. Official. And uh, I think. Oh. Oh. Okay. Sometimes it's so right slow. in front of your face. <laughs> Sometimes it's you right know? in your face. Right. 
<laughs> yeah, I think I kind of said it in the the prediction earlier. Uh, you don't have any relationship with him. Like six years has gone. Uh, he did some stupid shit in your wedding. You don't owe anyone your your presence, and you don't owe them a present with your presence. So yeah, go fishing, go kayak, do whatever you need to do. Not the asshole. Yeah, I agree. Door dash a coffee just to make it complete symmetry. I wouldn't even <laughs> just come door into dash the bit. that shit. <laughs> but like a real shitty coffee, maybe. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like McDonald's coffee. It's really shitty. McDonald's coffee. Uh, actually, it's a reverse here. McDonald's coffee is decent. The McCafe is bussing over in Canada, huh? Yeah, it's it's better than uh, Tim Hortons. Jimmy Hortons? For sure. Yeah. Wow. Tim, Tim Hortons is just bean water. It's terrible. <laughs> bean water. <laughs> uh, it's, I find it um, kind of funny that your uncle went to your parents instead of going directly to you to talk to. Yeah, even more reason for you to be like, fuck you, man. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, you guys have so little contact that he had to go through a third person to talk to you. And it's like, if he was, you know, expecting you to come that badly, he should have just talked to you directly and mm-hmm. straight up apologized or something like that. You know what I mean? Kind of wild of him. Yeah, but, and he uh, didn't even apologize. He just kept doubling down like, well, I brought you coffee and your bridesmaid. <laughs> as if that wasn't like the bare <laughs> minimum to do. Uh, yeah. So there is an update. We d- we get updates now on, on, uh, Whoa, on, our, oh, own sub, on our own subreddit. Ooh. So uh, there was a, a bunch of preamble about the drug uncle. I'm going to skip that just because it's not really part of the story. But uh, you can read that in the show notes. I'll, I'll link it. Is he um, more of a goat or less of a goat after reading? Uh, Probably maybe they less. really did go fishing and caught a lot of shit. <laughs> no, no, no. This is this is the meth uncle. The meth uncle. <laughs> oh, never mind. The one that uh, I gave kudos to for staying off the meth. <laughs> yeah, I think it was just more in detail about how he's doing with drugs. I don't know if he's still doing well with drugs, but it sounds like he cleans up when it when it needs to happen. He he gets mm. sober for like graduations wow. and stuff like that. So you know. He's a strong, well, you know, drug He's addiction a family, is terrible. man. But yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy to be able to hop off and on whenever you want. I feel like most people let it consume we'll them struggle completely. With that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, you know, he stays off it more often. <laughs> Maybe we need more important events, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fingers crossed. Uh, so update. I finally got an apology. He said he didn't attend six years ago due to his alcoholism and even though the reception was only placed with alcohol, he knew it would be better off fishing and drinking there than at the church and reception uh, drinking. He's living his best life and is still partying and drinking. I'm still not attending his wedding only because we haven't talked in six years and we no longer have a relationship. Yeah. The wedding is in July. We are scheduled for brunch after they return from Hawaii. I send. I am sending them a gift, though I will also door dash a coffee to the church. Hell yeah! Hey. <laughs> hey. Look at that. So now it will be more of the joke and not the fact that he didn't show up to my wedding. And that is the update. So I, it's <laughs> you bang on, got that one right, Sean. I might even give you a, a point for that. Yeah, no, no sympathy that. points. No, no sympathy no points. S- <laughs> yeah, that's fucking sick. Uh, I'm glad that, you know, you guys are, he was able to apologize finally a little, a little late, but you know, better yeah. late than never. But it sounds like he seems to have his alcohol, alcoholism alcohol. under control. I'm in control. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, there might be a good point that he's like, uh, you know, at that point in his life, he might not have been able to like him getting drunk by himself would have been better for your wedding than him becoming belligerent at the reception and possibly ruining something. Yeah. But again, that explanation would have been great six years ago as opposed yes. to now. You know what I mean? But it that is good. And kept contact with you for the past six years. Kind <laughs> yeah, of, yeah. I mean, he might have been embarrassed. Alcoholism and addiction is a uh, is one oh, of yeah. the disease. Oh no, yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's I'm happy now that he's apologized, and you guys are getting brunch whenever they get back from the honeymoon. Yeah, and that y'all are able to turn this uh, into kind of a, a joke, and you still get the benefit of not having to go. So yeah, exactly. And you don't yeah. have to go fishing now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. This episode. Might be sponsored by DoorDash, <laughs> but I guess, I guess you'll have to see as we're going to hit an ad break and, uh, you know, fingers Spoiler crossed. Spoiler alert, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Is it not? Well, you never know. We can hope. You never know. We can hope. Uh, but we'll be right back. And we're back. 
Wow. Did you love that dash door uh, ad? <laughs> Is that a bootleg? Yeah. Door dash? dash it sends door. doors directly to your house. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best we could do, guys. <laughs> so many doors. Just Need a new them. door? <laughs> dash door. Come on, do I home to dash door? Dash door. Be like one of those infomercials. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so fucking, it's always sunny. <laughs> What's the one thing about cats? They're too loud. Kittens. <laughs> oh, God. All right. <laughs> Let's move on to our third story. Cross posted by Phoebe the fan. It is titled, Am I the asshole for telling my wife she shouldn't attend a family wedding if I'm not invited? Yes. Yeah. You sound like a controlling dickhead. I mean, I can understand where, you know, you feel hurt. But to like out, I'm I'm assuming it's her own family. So it's weird for you to be the one to say you can't go to your own family's event. You know what I mean? I'm yeah, maybe, maybe John is, You can't go. <laughs> yeah, maybe John. John's right on the money the, with the That's with the vibe the I'm getting, asshole. Josh. Yeah. <laughs> that could be what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But I understand it, being heard about, we had, but, but trying to we make a, a demand is crazy. We had a story about that, right? Where the wife also was like, hey, I demand you to formally invite my husband by writing him a note because oh, yeah. the text yes. message one. Yeah, we yeah, did do yeah. that one. I do remember that. That might have been like yeah. a year ago. <laughs> that was no, probably that, a year ago. Was that a year ago? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Time flies. <laughs> it does. Uh, all right. Well, let's see. If Sean can get on the board for the first time today. My God. <laughs> it's rough. Pain. <laughs> I cranked up the difficulty for John and didn't realize I'm just, it's super hard difficulty it's for, for both Sean. of us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So last weekend, my 34 male wife, 35 female, received an invitation to her eldest sister's wedding. The invitation states that she and our three children are invited with no mention of me. Uh, it says four seats have been reserved in honor of wife, child, child, and child. Weird way to put that, but <laughs> anyway. I'm sure I'm sure it was the names of the child. Oh, I just don't you know about right. the names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just funny how that's put <laughs> child, child, child. Child, child, child one, child two, child three. Doesn't even have to be your children, actually. It can just be any, <laughs> just any child any, you find. Uh, <laughs> any child. <laughs> uh, I was insulted and thought my wife would agree that that is rude. But after she spoke with her mother to clarify if I really wasn't invited, she said she was still planning on attending. I said it wouldn't be fair for her to go without me and that I don't give consent for my children to go without their father. She said I'm being unreasonable as her niece and nephew will be there and it's a big family event. My argument is if it's so important the whole family attends, then I should be invited. If not, then it can't be that important and she shouldn't go. So who is the asshole here? You. <laughs> What's the reason why you're not invited? That's the question. Finally on the board. Yeah, you probably suck, dude. She probably doesn't like you. And this is this post is only further evidence that you do suck and that there is probably a reason she doesn't like you. You know what I mean? Um, True. Yeah, it's just like John and I both said in the beginning, and Josh, it's weird to try and make the demand that they can't go to their own family's wedding. And then you find out that it's like a, a sibling. You know what I mean? Like a close right. family member, a sibling. So for sure, she has to go. Whether your ass is going or not, just take the day, man. Just do something else. <laughs> what's so What's so bad with a little bit of alone time? You know what I mean? Or go fishing with the other OP. Yeah, yeah true. go fishing. <laughs> Although I don't know if what, uh, our listener wants to go fishing with this dude. He with might this be an <laughs> Yeah. The question though, is there an update? Uh, so there is comments. I was waiting to see what your initial uh, take was, John. I'll, oh, I'm I'll, still, I'll give you the information I'm, that you want, but I want to hear, uh, hear your thoughts. First. I'm still going asshole. Like, there's got to be a big reason why this person is not invited because sure. there's there's a situation where it's like they just if they're like if they don't like you, then I can understand why he'd feel some type of way. But the fact that like the other the their family was kind of adamant, like nah, you can't go. There's got to be a huge ass reason why you're not there, <laughs> and you must have done something stupid for you to be banned from that party. So there were some comments that also went along that line of you, John, where it's like, why were you not invited? Um, mm. And actually little, little lion, I think that's how it is asked. So why weren't you invited? Exactly what you asked. <laughs> there you uh, go. O- I didn't write this down cause I couldn't find it exactly. But OP said basically like 
relationship was strained. Uh, uh, big lion. Why are you, you surprised? big lion? <laughs> Between him and I think it was him and the the family, her family. But so, why is it strained? <laughs> yeah. So Foxfire seventeen thirty asked, "Why was it strained?" <laughs> there you uh, go. Op said. They felt that they had a say in the future of my marriage when me and my wife hit a rough patch almost 10 years ago. I thought we put it behind us. And then in 2020, they cut me out after a disagreement. So then uh, he never actually goes into what the disagreement is, but I'll get to that part anyway. Uh, Fabulous Ati asked, what sort of rough patch? Were they supporting her in an unsafe or unhealthy situation? He cheating, I bet. Opie said nothing like that. There was an issue of chronic infidelity on my part. That we that's, that, that, that <laughs> Whoa, John that is fucking good. Yo. That is your answer. John's good chronic, at this shit. <laughs> chronic, chronic infidelity. Like a chronic migraine. <laughs> He's just like, I gotta fuck. <laughs> I gotta cheat on my wife. Like, I'm craving some other woman's cheeks. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, there's your fucking answer why you're not invited, you dumb bitch. Like, yeah. Why I wouldn't are you want even to mad? see you at my wedding if you did oh, that to yeah. my sister. Fuck no. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to see you ever. Um, and for so him to not <laughs> immediately realize that's why. Get it in your head, dude. Yeah, what, what, what the, the fuck, wrong with you, you dumb idiot? Chances are he probably is still cheating around this time. And I think, too, that this whole time that he posted this, he was just trying to get some Reddit sympathy points. Yeah, but he was lying. Dig- Lying by omission, essentially, because yeah. he did not disclose that immediately saying that, oh, yeah, by the way, they don't like me because <laughs> I'm a habitual cheater. No, I think we just hit a rough patch in a relationship and he's still trying to fucking blame the family that it's not his fault. <laughs> You're yeah. a dumb bitch, dude. What's wrong with you? Thankfully, Phoebe the fan screenshotted uh, some of the main, you know, comments that that called oh, that because he deleted still even, after getting flamed no he still left them up because i because oh, so brave he, man. He, <laughs> phoebe screenshotted the the like him responding to them but not the context so i went in and found the context uh, and all of his comments are still there hey. um at, at least as far Delusional. as I can tell, there's there is a part uh, i'll finish reading what op actually said so there's a chronic infidelity on my part that we have dealt with as a couple and a move forward from Around that time, they also decided they didn't like our arrangement with my wife, which is that she would work for my company off the books. My business now makes enough to pay her a salary, so it's not an issue anymore. But things were difficult when we were trying to get the business off the ground. So uh, by the sounds of it, he wasn't paying his wife for a long time either during the time he's cheating on her. So not only were you cheating on like cheating on your wife... Yeah. You're also kind of financially binding her because you're you weren't paying her or you weren't paying her properly and so she's probably reliant on you with that's financial abuse essentially and you got her trapped. Yeah. She can't do anything. You have children. She can't go anywhere. You essentially trapped her and you you what? You're still cheating habitually and then you still <laughs> ask this fucking question, you stupid dumb motherfucker. <laughs> I'm already in a bad mood today and this is <laughs> even more bad. Oh, idiot! Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's insane. Like how he and like I said in the comments, he didn't he didn't put any of this in the main post, not even with an like an edit. Um, it, it's insane that he just like, kind of slid that in there at it during the comments. And, Nonchalantly, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I cheated a couple times, and yeah. you know, how bitch it work for me without paying. <laughs> That is uh, insane. Yeah. That's not even on top of the domestic labor she's probably doing at home too. So I'm heated today, y'all. I'm so sorry. I had a bad day at work. <laughs> well, let's keep going with this because there is his comment here uh, <laughs> as to what the disagreement was is here. Uh, so I don't know what he's responding to. Like, because like I said, uh, Phoebe just screenshotted his comment. So assumingly, it's someone asking if the fight was about the cheating. Uh, and so OP says, no, it wasn't. It was related to me calling out my wife's younger sister for causing drama in the family. Admittedly, it got out of hand on both sides, but before I had the chance to apologize, the whole family had blocked my number and told my wife to keep things separate going forward. They forced her to act like a single mother, having to split holidays and Christmases with the kids between me and her family, rather than just swallow their pride and choose unity. (laughs) You are the drama, you piece of shit. (laughs) 
<laughs> what is wrong with you? Holy so shit. So wild to be like, yeah, the list, little sister was causing like unnecessary drama by bringing oh. up all of my faults. Uh, you know, like cheating on <laughs> her sister, not financially paying her. manipulating her. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, what's the big deal? Dude, this guy is fucking awful. And so dense, or at least not, I don't know, like so in his own mind that he's not in the wrong ever. It's it's crazy. <laughs> it's narcissistic. Not I was, yeah, I was gonna say not, not that trying we're to misdiagnose diagnosing anybody. This dude's narc as hell, dude. Yeah. Um, he makes a comment here again. This is the last uh, comment that was screenshotted. OP says, I made sure she was looked after until I could pay her. The infidelity was years ago and until twenty twenty the family had been willing to get along with me despite it, so that's not relevant. <laughs> it's relevant, brother. Because look, <laughs> here here it is. Here it is. Is the they may have faked nice around you throughout until 2020, but like after that, like you can only fake nice for so long. You right. know, like it doesn't like there's no like for me personally, there's no forgiving a cheater. Uh like if someone if someone cheated on somebody I love, like you're dead to me. There's no recovery. I do yeah. not like you. Yep. So yeah, I, I don't know. Wild. What did I hear about? I made sure that she was l- looked after. Did I hear that right? So or someone else the, looked after her. That's in regards to the paying, right? So he he says he was like covering the bills or whatever, which is like bare minimum. You're not paying her. So. <laughs> yeah. Does it say it's not paying, fault. or was it just paying un- off the books? Under. Uh, it, it sounded like it was not. If if he was paying her, it was not like a livable wage. It was like. Mm. Uh, yeah, he wants you know, that financial manipulation on her yeah. end. So she can't leave if, if he doesn't pay her. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, just uh, <laughs> just an awful guy all around, basically. Yeah. Jesus uh, Christ! Is, is no self awareness whatsoever. Self righteous as hell. What a douchebag! <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. John is in full rage today. Full rage. Mode. I am I in full a, rage. Picked quite a few raging stories. I, I apologize. Uh, but. They've been blowing up on our subreddit, so I couldn't not. What can you know we what do? I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, if it keeps getting us subredditors, <laughs> subredditors is that there, isn't it called subredditors? I don't, I don't think so, I guess. but now it is in our community for sure. They're gonna hang on to that. I'm, no, I think subredditors is probably correct. They're just redditors, maybe. I, th- I was gonna say redditors. Oh, yeah. redditors, yeah, but okay. So uh, the fourth. Story we got here is cross posted by Sad Lower Score Taxi. It's titled "Am I the Asshole for Begging My Girlfriend to Uphold a Sexist Tradition Just So That She Can Make a, f- a Good First Impression?" Uphold a sexist tradition. E- yeah, you're an asshole for that. Yeah, if you would- feel that your girlfriend is going to be exposed to something that they're not comfortable with, don't fucking bring them. Yeah, or you know. Let people think however they want to think, uh, you know, let, you, you know, like John said, if she's uncomfortable, if she thinks something sucks and she doesn't want to do it then she shouldn't have to do it. It's not even just if she's uncomfortable, like if you know, it's going to make her feel uncomfortable because of said sexist tradition, don't even expose them to that. Like, <laughs> have a brain and consider their feelings off the yeah, bat. It, it's wild that you know, it's a sexist tradition and you're like, and you're still going to go through it. You should still do this. Enforce like. it. <laughs> You fucking asshole already. Uh, like you don't have it in your own brain. You can think for yourself. Um, yes. All right. Well, let's hop into it. This one, you know, might might be an easy one. <laughs> easy dunk. Um, so I have a big family that's incredibly close. We have a big family dinner every few months where we all meet at my great grandfather's estate and all eat together. Typically how this works is the women go to cook for the time that they're there and the men don't which I'm fully aware is sexist as hell. That being said, I'm one of the youngest people in my family and my protests mean literally nothing. Some of those women choose not to cook. However, this is usually met with a level of ostracizing. The women who don't cook are wives and long-term girlfriends. So they kindly, they kind of have a good family relationship doctored in. When I see, I don't know if that's how that's supposed to be. It's like grandfathered in, I guess. I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, that's a term. Grandfathered in? Yeah. Yeah, Oscar. it's pretty much they're they're pretty much vetted in. Yeah, listen, uh, I'm gonna reveal the nude button here. I don't know how to read. <laughs> <laughs> Let me play that again for you. <laughs> Is that one of us? I don't know how to read. 
That's me. A job? That's job. Yes. <laughs> I don't like, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good those one. times where we don't know how to read. Um, Which is probably going to be every quick. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised yeah. it's taken this long. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's our third button on the on the pyramid there. So uh, we all got one, right? Well, the one's not me technically saying fuck. No, kids, technically but. it's you. That's your voice, right? Fuck yeah, that sounds. Oh, like that me. sounds just <laughs> like you, brother. <laughs> Bang on. <laughs> All right. So, um, where was it? So the the girlfriends and wives that are long term are kind of grandfathered in. They don't have to cook if they don't want to. Uh, when I've seen new partners not cook, it's gone bad. Like completely ostracized, not speaking, cattiness, rudeness, etc. This dinner will be in two weeks and my girlfriend was asked if she would attend. Initially, she said yes, which is great. I want her to meet everyone and for everyone to get used to her being around. But when I explained to her the tradition, she was understandably bothered. I told her that I understood where she was coming from. However, it was best for everyone if she just played along. I told her this isn't permanent thing and that I'm only asking her to do this so that she can avoid bad treatment from the rest of the family. This is her first impression and I don't think it's best if we cause waves. She told me that is unacceptable and that if she has to do that, she will not be going. I've tried to find a compromise with her on this, but she won't budge and she's pissed at me. She told me that if I think it's acceptable to make her do this, then I'm just as bad as everyone else. Well, my point is that she needs to make a good first impression. So am I the asshole? Yes. Yeah. If you really want to compromise with your girlfriend, be that agent of change for your family. You know, yes. don't be, don't, don't be, because if you let her go through that, when she explicitly said like, I'm not comfortable with that, I don't want that, you're just as complicit, you know, and you say that, hey, my family is this, this and that, you're leaning into what they really are. And essentially, you're part of that problem. So if you yeah. don't step in and say like, hey, my significant other is not comfortable, if you ostracize them, then you're all fucking idiots, you guys are dickheads, then you, you, you're not part of the solution. So if you really want to step up for your girl, tell, tell your family, be like, hey, she's not doing shit because she doesn't want to. If not, then you're an asshole for forcing her to do it. Yeah. Forcing her to do anything under this guise is, is uh, just dumb. Like, not smart at all. If, if, and also, like John said, like, you, you are, or like the girlfriend said, you're just as bad as them if you're just, like, going to go through with it. Like, you should be, you know, I don't know what, possible compromises came up in your possible solutions, but you should just fucking let her go. And then like, you should hop in and start cooking and then let her do whatever she wants to do. If she wants to hang out in the kitchen with you and not cook or hang out with all the men and not cook or cook with you while you cook, whatever, but you should be the one getting in there, changing the, uh, you know, changing whatever the tradition is and, you know, trying to make her feel comfortable. Uh, And if, if the end compromise is whatever, like the most comfortable for her is just not going and you should also probably just not go. Uh, yeah. Kind yeah. of make a stand and be like, well, this is the reason we're both uncomfortable with the, you know, women cooking without them while the men do nothing. Like it makes both of us feel weird. So we're both not going to come. Maybe we'll see y'all at like another get together or something like that. You know, I, yeah, you should just be worried more about what your girlfriend thinks of your family than what your family thinks of your girlfriend. Yeah. And from what I'm hearing this story as well, some people in your family are grandfathered in or like they're vested that they don't even have to contribute to that. So if I were you, use your voice with your standing with that family because they'll listen to you more than a stranger that they'll meet for the first time. Step up. And like what Sean said, you do the cooking. Make it make be that first person and for like the man to look at like, oh, look, he's helping out in the kitchen. Let them fucking make fun of you. So for the next set of like generations to come. Then it'll be more of like a blended experience instead of like, hey, only the women do this and the men get to chill. So be the difference, dude. Yeah. No, I, I think you guys have said everything. Uh, I was also going to say jump in and cook <laughs> cook yourself if you want to, uh, if they need a, an extra hand or something like that. But yeah, it's it's wild. Like, And, and so, say you go through with this and and you step in and cook or, or you just don't cook with your girlfriend and, and they call you out on it. Call them back. Be like, what the fuck? Why does she have to cook? Like, why do you expect yeah. her to do this? Um, once you start questioning sexist traditions, there really Just tradition is no in general. You can yeah. question any tradition, whether it's sexist or not, and then kind of everybody can kind of come to terms on 
is this a good tradition or something yeah. we should kind of leave in the past? <laughs> Cause what's, what's their response going to be with you? Like, why do the, all the women have to cook? Like, what's their response? Because to that? they're no, women. I mean, yeah. Because <laughs> they're women. <laughs> if, if their answer is because they're women, that's not an answer. That's just, yeah, then, you know, then you know that's just leave. tradition. Uh, and so you can just push back until they realize that, or at least uh, until some of them realize that it's dumb and, and stop being pieces of shit about it. So, Look, I say this though. Some traditions are wholesome, but you got to present it in a way where it's it's okay to be, you know, get slowly introduced to it, not forced upon from the beginning. Yeah, it's you know, crazy it's- to go first time meeting somebody and then straight into a kitchen is wild. <laughs> Even yeah. if even if the tradition was like all guys cook and it was your girlfriend bringing you there for the first time and you're like you're expected to cook, it's like this is your first time in this kitchen. You have no idea where alone. anything is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Separating like, the new couple and <laughs> when you're the new person with the person they know at a party is strange. Is wild. Yeah. It is. So it's, I wouldn't it's feel a, comfortable. No, I Facts wouldn't either. either. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'd be very uncomfortable. Even but, if it was uh, like my girl, like say like this was me and Nancy's family. And if, you know, she went to go cook or whatever, I would feel weird just by myself with a bunch of people I don't know. Uh, for sitting the first there time. wondering like, should I help in the kitchen? It seems like I should, but also <laughs> none of the other guys are doing. Yeah, it's just, it's weird to to leave your spouse like as soon as you get to a party. Yeah. In my opinion, I don't know. Maybe I'm clingy. At least for the first time, anyway. Yeah, for the like, first time. For the first wild. time, yeah. I'm sure now that you, you, like you know Nancy's family, you're oh more yes. comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but first yeah, time. If, first time dropped me off at the house, and then she's like, "Well, gotta go." I'd be like, "Whoa." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sean, you you gotta go cook. Uh, I'll be I'll be out back. Uh, so yeah, uh, you're an asshole and a dickhead. Uh, call out people who deserve to be called out. Nice. And with that, we're gonna hit an ad break. And we're going to come back with uh, some more pregnancy stories. So get excited. Mama's milk. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Which you can also get on Dash Doors. (laughs) Dash (laughs) Doors. Mama's milk. The official (laughs) distributor. Oh, God. Well, I know for a fact DoorDash will never sponsor us now. (laughs) Never at this point. We're Uh, making the new Reddit. We're making the new DoorDash. We can't be stopped, (laughs) y'all. We're going to run America pretty soon. Uh, We need to start crowdfunding soon then. (laughs) Get some capital or something. We are. It's our Patreon. patreon Patreon.com slash culture podcast network. There it Uh, is. Bam. All right. So uh, our our second last story here is cross posted by dead lower score god nine and it's titled am i the asshole for stealing my breast milk from my nephew stealing my breast my milk. breast milk from so it's your nep- breast milk then no it's your breast yeah. milk. yeah why's your nephew getting into that <laughs> yeah give your nephew some formula or some shit. i have a feeling that this is one of those entitled siblings it's like i can't la- like like kid can't latch on to me you know, like Therefore, you have to feed my child. We did a story similar to this already, kind of. Uh, yeah, you might be right, actually. My, my mind went way worse, surprisingly. <laughs> Crazy for my mind to go worse than John. <laughs> that is wild. What were you thinking? What were you like, thinking? Yeah, I stole my breast milk from my 12-year-old nephew. Oh, gosh. <laughs> hey, yo. I thought that's where John was going. I've been hanging out with John for far too long. Uh, I'm not that sick in the head, brother. <laughs> That's that's Maybe. wild. <laughs> that's we'll all edit you. That out. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. <laughs> no, no, we're leaving that. For <laughs> no, no, sure. no, we're leaving that in. <laughs> I didn't take all a break right. from from this podcast. We're, it's ruining. We're me. gonna mil- we're gonna milk it for what it's worth, Sean. There oh. we go. Yeah. Um. So I can't believe I'm posting this here. This is one of the most wild things that has ever happened to me. <laughs> My 12 year old nephew. <laughs> And you correctly predicted the other <laughs> prediction, so you might be onto something, brother. That would be fucking wild. Oh, so <laughs> terrible. So terrible. So I, 26 female, had my baby girl four months ago. She never latched to my breasts, so I've been exclusively pumping her entire life. On average, my daughter eats about 26 to 30 ounces of milk a day, and I produce about 36 to 40 ounces a day. 
Most days, I'm able to freeze four ounces, and if I'm lucky, I can freeze eight. My plan is to be able to wean myself from pumping because it's time consuming, and frankly, I hate it. Uh, it's a labor of love, am I right? And I want to begin to feed my daughter with frozen with my frozen milk. Well, my husband and I live in a small condo, and our only freezer is attached to our refrigerator, so I don't have any storage for my additional milk. Back in February, I asked my mom if I could utilize some of her freezer space. She has a chest freezer and store my breast milk there. She was more than happy to help and even came by to pick it up for me. She knew my plan was to eventually quit pumping and feed this milk to my daughter. Well, my brother, 22 male, and his girlfriend, 20 female, were about six months pregnant at the time. They both live at home with my mom. I don't think anything of it and continue to store it at her house. My mom made a weird comment back in April about how my brother's girlfriend, let's call her A, wasn't going to be able to be as committed to breastfeeding as I have been that it was okay because she could always feed my nephew some of my breast milk from the freezer. Mm, that's I was some boundaries, bro. <laughs> John, right <laughs> some, on the money again with the entitled, boundaries, man. entitled siblings. And he came out 12 years old. That's wild. Oh, whoa. <laughs> I fucking <laughs> knew it. I'm also <laughs> right on the money. Uh, I Benjamin was Button. <laughs> Benjamin Button style, yeah. <laughs> Starts at 12. Um, I was floored. I said, no, the milk is for my baby. And I was more than happy to take the milk to my dad's house to store it because they're divorced. My mom kind of dismissed me, but vaguely said, yeah, yeah, I know it's your milk, but only in case of emergencies. No. I reiterated No that. means no. no. no, 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 no. <laughs> Y'all need to respect boundaries and when people say no. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they all skipped that no means no seminar. Uh, right. The rest of us know what it means. So I reiterated that no, it was my milk. The subject was quickly dropped after, but I had a bad feeling. Fast forward to Saturday, my brother's girlfriend A went into labor and gave birth to my nephew. Unfortunately, he inhaled the anamic fluid when he came out and had to have his lungs drained three times and was transferred to a different hospital for observation in the NICU. He was born about 8.30 p.m. on Saturday night. Around 9 a.m. on Sunday morning, I received a call from my mom panicking that my nephew still had not eaten and that A was struggling to produce milk and that our nef- my nephew was rejecting the formula. She asked if it would be okay donating some of the milk until A started producing. I told her, of course I would. That's my nephew and I was glad to be of some use in some ways. Plus, it was an emergency. I pumped an extra session that day and delivered them 10 ounces of fresh milk and four bags of frozen milk to the hospital. Monday, my brother and A were able to take my nephew home and invited me over to help her with breast pumping. Well, there, my brother said something along the lines of, yeah, thanks for the milk. A hasn't tried to pump or breastfeed yet, so all the baby has eaten is your stuff. The hospital had donor milk, but we preferred to have yours. Dot, dot, dot. What the fuck? I asked them why they lied to me. If A wasn't stimulating her milk production and they had donor milk, why did they so desperately need mine? He again said... We made an executive decision to use yours and we preferred to have the fresh stuff and shrugged it off. I went home that night fuming and tried to figure out what to do. I'm not one to lash out at the, at the moment, so it took me a few days to figure out how to approach this. This morning, I decided to go over to the house and take the milk from the chest freezer. I normally keep some formula in my diaper bag just in case, so I gave the formula and took uh, my milk back. I told my brother that although I was more than happy to help them during their time of need... I was disappointed that one, they lied to me, and two, I wasn't even uh, A wasn't even trying to feed her own baby and was strictly relying on my milk. And three, I do not have the capacity to provide for two babies. He was disappointed and said that my milk was the only way that they could provide for their baby. Again, she says, what the fuck? And that they couldn't afford formula. I reassured them that if A starts either breastfeeding or pumping regularly, she might be able to recover her supply. After bringing the milk to my dad's house, I recounted what I had and realized that either my mom or my brother had hid some additional milk in the freezer inside. I originally had over 300 ounces stored there and only had 204 ounces back. There was no way four-day-old baby ate 96 ounces of milk. I got passive-aggressive texts from my mom telling me that I was cruel to steal milk from my nephew when I'm clearly... Steal? (laughs) Steal my own milk. She said it was cruel for me to steal the milk from my nephew when clearly I'm an oversupplier. Literally, no, I'm not. I'm very lucky to make a little extra, but by no, me- by no means am I a fucking milk reserve. She said that I could just pump a few extra weeks, 
but that I was depriving my nephew of nutrients that he needed since he was in an ICU baby and that I should be more understanding. This is bizarre, right? I worked so hard to make that milk over 12 hours of pumping is equivalent to what I donated to them plus what they took. And A is just assuming that I would continue to give it them more. So am I the asshole for stealing my breast milk back? No, you didn't steal no. shit. That's yours. <sighs> yep. I wish you guys had interrupted me a bit more. That was, that a, was a long one. <laughs> that was a tough read. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> I, I will say that OP, you know, stepped up when they needed to. Right when they said, hey, uh, the kid's not latching on. Like, they're not feeding. Can you help us out? And the OP, out of respect, was like, oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I'll help out a family. It's because they asked nicely. And then the entitlement, like, kind of kicked in. And all of a sudden... Like it's expected for her to to feed another kid, yeah, and not to like shit on the couple, but like if you're not prepared to make a child, you should have done a better job of like preparing. So, <laughs> uh, it, it's not on the OP to provide for your kid moving forward. Y'all gotta figure that shit out. Y'all can't be stressing other people for your problems. Not saying kids are problems to some maybe, but no, no, you, know. you are saying that. Fuck, fuck them kids, right, Josh? There you go. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But I'm just saying, y'all, some people just need to be more prepared and not rely, not, not saying to rely on others, but like expect others to pick up the slack for them when they can. So that's just me. Yeah. And I want to say uh, it's pretty fucked up to call panicked, panic your sister slash daughter, depending on who you are in the story. Yeah. Uh, send them into a panic. And have them rush and work hours to... She donated 12 hours worth of work um, to what she thought, you know, was an emergency. And turns out, you know, you were given options. You didn't try to stimulate the milk. I know close to nothing about breastfeeding. (laughs) This is three men talking about breast milk. True. So, none of us have had kids, so it's a, let that yeah. be known as well. <laughs> but it does sound like, from what OP is writing, that there are steps that her brother's girlfriend or baby mama uh, is not taking in order to get the milk stimulated and flowing and whatnot. So right. it's crazy to just like not even try that at first, and then go straight to being like, you know, you're. You're so inconsiderate. That's the only way this baby will, will live is if we have your milk specifically. That's strange. You know, you gotta. You haven't even tried formula. You haven't even tried to, you know, get the milk flowing. Um, I don't know how to do that, but it sounds like OP thinks that there are ways to make that happen. So I think more like when I hear John say like, uh, be more prepared, like that's what I'm thinking is like, you should know the ways like to stimulate the milk already. Like if you're having a kid, like, you know, I understand like, I, well, I can understand like not being like, cause they're so young, not being financially prepared for children. Like I don't even think I'm financially prepared. Oh, I'm not even close to being ready. So it's like (laughs) the least you can do is fucking read up on all the free knowledge that you can get off internet books, other parents, and Look like at all this just knowledge in my garage. Yeah, just like <laughs> spend like, you know, make up for the money that you don't have by, you know, learning about shit on how to make this easier for both of you guys. So, yeah, uh, you're definitely not the asshole. Your brother and uh, baby mama should have tried more things before. Like you should be a last resort. And, right, they, yeah. you know, it's like they they were entitled the whole time. They they never that's, really that's the truly yeah. they never truly asked nicely or they never truly needed it. They were just like, yeah, it's there. That's yeah. ours. Now that I think about it, the brother never even asked the sister or the OP to begin with. It was through the mom, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. So even more reason to be like, hey, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Well, like it's just it is kind of crazy because if you think about it, like if you weren't there or you weren't. Like if you didn't have just have a baby and you weren't producing milk, like that's how they should think about things. They should be relying on you because Mm -hmm. uh, they should be going out the ways that everyone else had to do it. You didn't have that when you started off with your baby, right? OP didn't. And so she like, they should have to realize like, yeah, okay. If we had an emergency, we could use this. Uh, But sounds like they had uh, other alternatives to milk. Like you guys said, 
And, uh, and they could have just used that instead of panicking OP and making her use her source. Cause like, what if tomorrow she stops producing milk and her baby yeah. still needs milk? You know, like how long is that reserve now that she has going to last? It's like not. Yeah. And it's, it's not, not sustainable for OP. I, like I said, three men talking about breast, uh, yeah. breastfeeding, but <laughs> I imagine like the pain and like, you know, th- she probably has to go through I know a lot it's of painful shit. as fuck. Yeah. I bet. I know that I for bet. sure. I bet. So even without like, teeth, they're essentially fucking breaking your skin. Right. Yeah. You know so what I mean? the brother expects and it, it's, it's become an expectation for them to like provide for another life. That is so unfair for the OP. Like, and yeah. like what OP was saying, like it, she's already fortunate enough that she's kind of producing a little bit extra. So that way she can save some time later on from either the pain, the time, or just like the mental capacity for her to even produce. You yeah. know? So it, it's, it's totally unfair for OP. That being said, there are some times where, you know, I've heard that women, like, no matter what they do yes. to get it prepared, they can't, you know, get it flowing or whatever. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. it just sounds like from the context that we have been given is that they mm-hmm. didn't even try yeah. to get that started. They just went, oh, we already have the backup stash in the freezer. Wham, bam, quick fix, you know, type of deal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Definitely I, you know, I get it's what we're shitting on. Yeah, yes. I, I get maybe in the heat of the moment, uh, like maybe that panic was real and being entitled heat of the moment being like, we're not making milk. Uh, we, we need fresh milk, blah, 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 going to the sister. Uh, but then after getting the baby back home and like everything is settled to still be like, yeah, we need you to, we're expecting 12 hours at, all the time now is crazy. Yes, yeah, it's ridiculous. I, I, I can understand <laughs> like in a panic, you're not making the soundest decision. You know sure, I mean? that's that's but valid. Afterwards, everything settled, and then you're still like, keep that shit pumping for us, right? Is is I, weird. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, in terms of assholes, like mom is asshole number one in in my mind. Oh, like facts. OP's mom, because like yeah. she's, she's, enab- she's enabling. I think she's she enabling. implanted the idea. Yeah. To and, the to the brother, and is not you know helping them realize that they could be producing their own milk and like like helping them in any way she can. Like she's just like, uh, Easy you fix. Know, like, like yeah. putting all the burden on, on OP, which is super unfair. I yeah. get like as young new parents, like that can be scary and you might not know what to do. Again, Sean said, you should probably prepare for that, you know, learn, read. Um, but uh, like your mom should, sh- is in a position where she's gone through this herself and she should know and be able to help you and support you in a calmer way, uh, than she is doing. So, mm-hmm. That's just my my thought there, but uh, close it out. We'll go with the last story here. Uh, it's cross posted by Blood Valkyrie, a uh, Blood Unicorn Valkyrie, and it's titled "Am I the asshole for yelling at my brother's pregnant girlfriend and kicking them both out of my house after she threw my food away?" It, it, hold, hold on, this was at their house. Uh, yep. Uh, I'm sorry, but you throw food at my house. I don't give a shit if you're pregnant. I'm yelling at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you learned anything from the water Patreon story, me and John are mm, big. If you know, you know. House rules. My- <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and other Patreon stories. John's a big fan of food. And Sean actually is, is a big fan of food. Uh, yeah. You touch my lot. food, I'm fucking throwing hands, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come between John and his food is, is what he's saying. I'm so. staring at the food that my wife made right now. And I'm just waiting for a break <laughs> so I can eat. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into it so that John can get to his food because I don't want to stand in the way of him and his food. I'll fly to enough. fucking Ottawa. <laughs> I'll eat it today to begin with. Uh, so I, 27 male, live alone. My brother, 21 male, and his girlfriend, 19 female, still live with their parents as they can't afford a place of their own. His girlfriend is currently pregnant with him in four uh, in four months. That doesn't make any sense. With I do in four months. Do in four months, maybe? Probably. Yeah, she's probably gonna. Yeah, she's probably gonna give birth in four months. Yeah, we'll go with that. Or she could be four months pregnant. It's one or the other. <laughs> Either way, it was just about like the what yeah. is it, the gestation it's period is nine months. Middle. So yeah, it's close <laughs> in the middle. We can go either or. Yeah, uh, my brother asked to bring his girlfriend for dinner in order to catch up, and I said, "Sure, why not?" However, the moment she entered the house, she started complaining about the smell of steak I was making, and said, "Just the smell alone makes her nauseous, and she can't eat this." I tried to suggest an alternative, but she was dead set on Chinese food and ended up sending my brother to go to the nearest mall in order to get her some. 
I thought that would be the end of it, but after going to the bathroom and coming back, I caught her throwing my unfinished steak into the garbage. I asked her, "That's what a the mistake, hell- <laughs> lady." <laughs> I asked her what the hell she was doing, and said the smell was so strong she thought she'd end up throwing up on the floor, and that she needed to get rid of it. And started spraying perfume from her purse in the kitchen. I was beyond furious at this point and sent her back to the living room. And after my brother came back from the mall, I kicked them both out with their Chinese food. My brother tried to convince me to let them back and that I could make something else for the the two of us and that his girlfriend was pretty much sobbing at this point, but I was dead set on kicking them out. However, my parents ended up being mad at me for apparently causing so much distress to my brother's pregnant girlfriend. I told them that she literally threw out our dinner, but they said that I shouldn't have yelled at her or kicked them out as she's still just a teenager who's now getting influenced by her pregnancy hormones and that my outburst also caused problems in their relationship as she ended up sending my brother to sleep on the couch that night, even though he literally defended her as well against me. So I have no clue how that's my fault. I might the asshole for not having enough tact to deal with a pregnant teenager. I'm going to say no. Same. I'm sorry, <laughs> but... Look, look, there were other options for her, right? Like she could have gone to maybe the other bathroom, maybe turn that air on, maybe take a step outside... Well, I don't know what kind of, you know, maybe if it's an apartment, you don't want to just be alone in an apartment complex. That's fair. But maybe open a window, uh, turn the fan on on the vent. Uh, I don't know. There seemed like it feels like throwing the steak away was probably like put it in the microwave. Yeah. Throw it on a plate, throw it in the fridge. Uh, Oh, just seems crazy right off the bat to just throw it in the trash. Uh, yeah, and spray shit all over the the kitchen, and probably end up doing like you know mixing all like the herbs or spices or whatever with perfume. <laughs> I will I'm, say that I'm like, just saying. I, I get where she's coming from. Like it probably does make her nauseous. Yeah, I would say sure. I'm sympathetic, I would say, but I just feel like that's same. a crazy last fair last throwing it out. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I think it's probably on. <sighs> Honestly, I think it's probably more on the brother, maybe because he didn't ask what you were making. What for you were dinner making, yes, <laughs> and yes, give you that's like the a, point. A list of Heads things up. that shouldn't be made. Yeah, that's yeah. probably where he, where he fucked up. Because there. because at the end of the day, like the o- OPs, that's 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 their domain, that's their house. So like, of yeah. course, they're gonna go with what's familiar to them, like what they're making, whatever. I don't know if it sounds. I don't know if it sounds like they were making dinner for everybody. I didn't. I don't. I didn't fully catch that. I think that. so. I think he was. So that is really on the brother to be yeah. like, "Hey, what are you making for dinner? Like, what what, what could you <laughs> have made us?" Because I, 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 I'm I am sympathetic to the the pregnant woman because yes, she's going through a lot of stuff, body changes, hormones, everything. So at nineteen, but the actions too. at nineteen, but the actions yeah. at my house. <laughs> Throw my steak. Yeah, you don't know how yeah, expensive that up. steak is either. Exactly. True. Could be wagyu. Sean loves. I mean, if wagyu. it was if it was yeah. made well done, then maybe you could have thrown it. <laughs> then you could have been. You could have had a reason to throw it out. But honestly, the order of like assholes that I would say is definitely the the brother for not being aware or like getting all that information in, knowing you know the 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 girlfriend probably have sickness. Yeah. Just or all that the girlfriend the action was kind of messed up but then like i can see why because <laughs> she's she not in right. like up. you know and, total control yeah. of her senses and then like op is like in the very bottom i think he slightly sucks for yelling but i can understand why he did what he did yeah yelling yeah. i don't think was the right move to be like ah i really did not want <laughs> you to do that uh <laughs> you you, done that. as exactly. soon as as soon as my brother gets home uh, I got to ask you guys here. to leave because yeah. yeah. I'm kind of mad and I don't want to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Yelling is crazy. Yelling at a 19 year old, a pregnant 19 year old, uh, you know, is, is pretty, pretty bad. I will say this though, it, you know, not to completely victim blame the pregnant uh, woman, but if the smell was so bad, I wonder why she didn't like go with the boyfriend to the mall to like get yeah, out and, and let the brother like air oh. out the place. Or like either of the guys saying like, oh, let me fucking get the smell out of here. You should go with, you know, my brother, you know, something to get her <laughs> out of away there. from the scent and then let you have time to clean your shit up. Yeah, it is kind of wild of like, 
so like she comes in and is like 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 saying she's gonna throw like feels like she's gonna throw up like it's making her why she still stay <laughs> yeah well why did he also keep cooking it <laughs> I mean That's, steak is even if even if like you stop cooking it that smell is gonna be there for quite a while I guess yeah. but like trying to air it out maybe a little bit or something like that or yeah. or realizing that oh we're not gonna be able to eat steak with her let's all go for Chinese or something you know what I mean like oh yeah uh, just everybody leave the apartment <laughs> yeah. yeah. That might I feel like a lot smartest. of this could be avoided by just, you know, well, first having like the food reservations and being like, hey, this is what you can't eat. And then on top of that, mm -hmm. once you realize that he's cooking something that makes her sick, being like, well, let's just get, get out. out. Let's go somewhere yeah. else where we can sit yeah. down and, and have a meal that's like not going to make you sick. Uh, like many of these stories, I don't know how you're not like knowing the menu before going over <laughs> you know that's that's just a me thing, but you it seems like a lot. an you awful a lot. an yeah. awful lot of stories end up happening because there's a misconfusion and like just miscommunication over what's getting served that night. Right, and, you know, mm -hmm. it just makes sense. You know, before you hang out, be like, "What's the plan? What can what can I bring to help make dinner better?" Like, yeah. you need me to bring sides or a dessert or a drink, blah blah blah. Know the shit ahead of time. At, at least that's what I do, and it always makes it easy. I always know what I'm eating. And if it's something I don't like, I know to eat before or after. Well, especially if you're someone who has like an aversion to certain foods, like being like, oh, hey, like, what I, are we having? Or like, I hey, do. Fucking ketchup. This? We're doing hot dogs and shit. And you got mustard and shit out there. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's going to be throwing Sean. up. <laughs> yeah, you should know. You should. That's my that's my suggestion to all Wikimaniacs. Um, always you know, know the menu ahead of always time. Always know the menu. What the fuck? <laughs> yes. Maybe that's just me. And like half of the reason I get excited to go and do anything is to know what meal I'm the having. What it's going to be. Yeah, yeah. What the food's going to be. And uh, oh, Sean, you would love to I'm come over to our house. We always, have, we always have a menu. Ooh. You guys have like an actual legit, like, we actually have a legit menu. Canva menu. Yes. Every yes. night is wild. Oh, yeah. We haven't shown you that, Josh. No. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh shit. Yeah, we have a legit menu, dude. It's crazy. Oh my God. I think you put it in the in the team Slack in the random I did. one time. I yeah. did at some oh, point. She yeah. like printed out like all the choices of the for the week. I'm like, Jesus. That's so yeah. funny. Organization. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love that. Uh I just go, what do I have in my fridge? <laughs> just <laughs> slap it on the grill. <laughs> Uh, all right, that is it for this episode, Wikimaniacs. Bit of a long one for our patrons. Ooh, almost two hours. Uh, closing Jeez. in on that. Uh, what did you think? Were these people assholes? Let us know in the comments down below on YouTube, Discord, or in our subreddit. If you want to hear more, please consider subscribing to our Patreon at patreon.com slash cultivate podcast network and unlock bonus episodes as well as extra stories every Friday, including the two stories we talked about today, which did get a little divisive in the one. Uh, respectfully though respectfully divisive and we still love each other look at that still still <laughs> uh so thank you sean <laughs> and john for coming on and giving your takes thank you wikimaniacs for another amazing episode we'll see you on monday bye bye <laughs>